it's like that's who we're all here for <laughs> it's like what was the thing you said you can hear me it like looks um you guys made this exact joke last <laughs> this time like the second i got in too you said what did you I have say something you said, really funny to say when everyone's in the call <laughs> just wait you, for it wait for what just wait for everyone to be in the call i have something really funny to say <laughs> that's i'm concerned Hi, I'm Nick from Current Choice. I hereby request Josh Ovalle to be on the Internet is Dead podcast. Please come on the Internet is Dead podcast, Josh Ovalle from Vine. We miss you so much. This is Pierce's mug. Wait. Oh, I forget this guy's. Oh, John Stamos. Do you guys like it? Yeah, pretty cool. I see it. God, is he just going to do this the whole call? <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually, I'm not gonna ask Nick anything. I'm just gonna keep asking if he likes my mug. I think you've also made like 10 renditions of that same joke. No more jokes. I'm done. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. You're totally fine. <laughs> I have blown this so many times. Yeah, it's, it's all my fault. It's all my fault. I had a joke prepared. I've been sitting on it for like three hours. Okay, great. Let's hear it. Agents, oh my god. Did you guys see that joy again is over? Fly high, Angel. Okay, anyways. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> good one. No, that was yeah, good. No. I was thinking about that. See, you shouldn't have told us beforehand. Yeah. Reacted. If I didn't know it was a joke, then maybe, uh, maybe it would have got me, you know? No, they are over, though. Oh, they're over? Yeah, that was my... <laughs> it's not really a joke, though. I know, it's not really a joke. I just <laughs> thought it'd be good to bring up as soon as you entered the call. <laughs> That's See, just no sad. Knows. Yeah, no, it is pretty sad. Anyway. Those, those are my Philly boys. <laughs> what happened? Do you know? I don't know. They're just over it. They, they decided it. They posted it on Instagram. Okay, I'm going to introduce... Um, the podcast and give like a little overview because this is our first episode so thanks for coming on our first episode oh my god so much pressure <laughs> um but yeah you're all listening to the internet is dead podcast um we're also called the joshua Baye. please be a guest on my podcast podcast i'm Brittany. i'm joined by my friends samira and adrian um and nick radigan of current joys uh samira is going to be here every episode but adrian's just here today because he knows stuff about nick radigan that we don't you make it and sound like, so fucking it. weird <laughs> like we brought on a nick radigan stalker yeah and I, i'm a scholar i'm a current joys scholar <laughs> Dude, well, you're like a me. consultant yeah, I, I like that. Let's go on my resume. Yeah, put that on there. But um, yeah, to introduce the podcast itself, Samira and I just grew up heavily on the internet. We've been wanting to make a podcast for a while where we just talk about internet fame with people who have actually like experienced it firsthand. Um, so on the Internet is Dead podcast, we're just going to be discussing the internet's evolution and how that's been deeply attached to stan culture um, and how that's changed over the past decade. Uh, there were once like widely recognized names in the online world and like due to how saturated the internet has become, it's more of a rarity. So becoming internet famous in like 2024 looks like, so much different than it does than it did in 2014. Um, so that's like a lot of what we want to talk about. Um, yeah, Samira, did you have anything to add to that? So we have to explain the Joshua Valle lore because I feel like that, you know, is like a big part of it. I feel like that was like, I feel like Brittany and I both like grew up like kind of on the internet, but we both grew up on like sort of different sides of it in a way. And then like Joshua Valle like brought us together, you know? And so now it's like, we're He's a Vine guy. He's the Jared. I never learned how to read guy. Yeah. Josh from Vine? Mm-hmm. You know him? No. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> wait, wait. What was the other name of this podcast? It's also Josh called... Vine, please be a guest on my podcast podcast. Josh from Vine, please be a guest. I was, okay, this all makes sense. Yeah, now. if it's, we could all say all it clicking. all at the same time really quick. One, two, three. Josh Vine, Josh from Vine, please be, please a, guest be a guest on my podcast, on my podcast <laughs> podcast. What's yeah. his last name? Ovalle. Ovalle. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. I thought you were saying Josh from Vine. Um, It'll come up again. So, like, you can, like, just keep that in mind. Keep in mind his last name. We're going to come back to that. You can learn it, like, throughout the interview and then. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, Adrian, do you want to speak for yourself at all? You can, Do you have anything else to add? <laughs> not really. I mean, I'd like to clarify that I'm not, I'm not like a stalker. <laughs> when he reached out to me, it was like, uh, hey, we're going to interview Nick Radigan. And um, actually, when I first met Brittany last summer uh, at this show, uh, we were talking about, I think we we're talking about writing in general, because uh, we both work in journalism, but she had a way cooler job than me and was like, and I had just spoken to you about your album and I was like like picking your brain about it and uh, she was about to go up for your show in Brooklyn I think in like July and said that like she'd interviewed you and I was like oh shit like I um I guess I kind of like exposed myself as like a day one like current Joyce fan. You were talking about Bandcamp. <laughs> oh my god yeah well okay i feel like i have um my perspective i remember finding your music like 2015 it was like just on Bandcamp. i don't know it was one of um one of like a handful of like artists i had found when i was younger that just like i think really like spoke to me a lot part of it was like the the kind of diy aspect and part of it was just like oh shit like I, I can only find this guy's music on Bandcamp and putting out records just like doing it himself and I was like as like a teenager I was like it took away this this whole like intimidation factor with making music like there's this idea that you have to you know go to a studio you have to be in with the right crowd whatever and um I was like this guy's making really good music just by himself like he's just fucking doing it and I was like I could do that obviously since then you've like got a lot of popularity mostly through like um you know the internet and like back on Vine and TikTok and stuff and I I feel like I kind of had this seat where I was just like watching that progression I'm not I'm not like a stalker or anything I just uh, like you said that like so many (laughs) I think it's it's because that's how he was introduced sorry like Like, god I can't just say someone's a fan anymore it has this whole thing around it yeah. Uh, no no <laughs> honestly honestly like would be so sick to do a podcast where you're just like we found a stalker <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and they're here with you today don't worry you you don't you don't give stalker vibes yeah. for sure i i honestly don't think i've ever had a real stalker I, at least i not that oh, i yeah. know of dude we can make it happen we can't we can turn Adrian into that you want you would think it would be it would be so easy to stalk me though i'm just so <laughs> online so said, available to like, like, the masses you know, i was gonna add to like what you just said like we were all on vine like when it was like really popping off and like i remember adrian when we were talking about what to talk about like today you were saying how like a bunch of like literally like josh obaya included like and like some of his like bumped like the current joy's music like when it was really small and gave it one of like the first like spikes like of popularity on the internet too like for sure vine i mean i don't i don't know if you guys know like emma greer yeah that's who that was, emma greer was friends with josh Ovaya. that was like their okay okay group. for sure for sure because i i know that's that was my whole that was probably the first big interaction or uh experience i had with the internet where i was like i do not know how to handle this <laughs> essentially was because of of Emma Greer. Like out of all the times that my music has like blown up online, I've never been a part of it. I've never been like doing anything to uh, create these like viral moments or anything. And I feel like the Emma Greer one was the most confusing to navigate because for anyone who doesn't know who Emma Greer was, but she was this you know, a 16 year old girl who was struggling with cancer and was posting about her, her life and her journey. And I I didn't even really know about her until after the fact, but um, she tragically passed from it. And I like, from what I know, one of the last videos she posted was a video of her to new flesh, like one of my songs. And when that happened, it was like the first week I had moved to Los Angeles I remember I moved to Los Angeles. I was very just like. How old were you at the time? Oh, my God. I think I was like 24 or 25. And I just started getting all these messages about Emma Greer. They're like, oh, my God, I love Emma. Like, 
rest in peace like i love your music well it was like this weird conversation of like my music exploding and this like girl's death and it was very i i i literally just like stepped away from all of it because i was like i you know i don't know how to i don't know how to respond to this and it was like something so out of my my world and so tragic and i just felt like Honestly, I, I still don't know how to feel about it. Like, it was just this very uh, surreal, strange thing that could, like, probably only happen on the internet. And it feels very dystopian in a way, like, that mm. this is a way that my music got out to so many people is through this really tragic um, experience. Um, and, and, like, I remember, I think I've met a few of her friends throughout the years that moment specifically has been probably one of the most bizarre throughout all of this because at the same time it was like my music was exploding in this way that I also couldn't explain or understand and um yeah I don't I don't even really know how to like digest it I think I just I just completely stepped away from it which is kind of what I've done every time <laughs> like the music has this like resurgence i'm just like okay i have to like step back and like be in my own life and be in my own reality because you know it creates all these strange parasocial relationships from like the fans and and the people who discover the music where they are having this uh entangled emotion about me and like their relationship to me I don't know who any I I don't know who any of them are. There's like thousands of people who are creating this 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 relationship to me and and now millions that are are creating a an intimate relationship with me, binding my music to their own personal tragedy tragedies to their own personal experiences and then I'm just like dealing with my own things, you know. <laughs> it's it's very strange and you know, I've done it as well with other artists and I just think it's it's like that is the internet to me, you know. And and I feel like we don't really have the uh the sort of literacy or like media literacy or the internet literacy, I don't know what to call it, to really really see people for who they are when it comes to building someone up as a a messiah for their art or like building someone up as as this like grand being is what what we do and i think what humans have done throughout centuries but now we have this very interesting mode of um digesting it and and communicating with people was that like the first time that that happened that was like the first blow up was emma greer well no that was there's been like i would say there's been three massive blow ups and the first one is actually a very interesting story and i'll try to keep it short the first blow up of my music was back in like 2013 we were on band camp i had played a show in los angeles but on my way to the show i was living in reno at the time we would drive like nine hours down to la to play at the smell and which is like this small diy space on my way to the show I got into a car accident and like I got hit on the side of the side of my car car spun around I smashed my face on the side of the window instruments flew around the street like total just freak accident and I remember being on the side of the street and I was like crying because I was on the way to my show. All my friends were texting me. They're like, it's like it's sold out. Like so many people are here. Like, where are you? Like, when are you getting here? And I was just bawling, crying because I was like, I fucked this up so hard. Was like calling my girlfriend. I was like, I don't know what to do. And this guy I was with was he taps me on the shoulder and he's like, I have to go to the show. He was in the car accident as well. He was like, I have to go to the show you should like pull yourself together and go play the show and i had like i couldn't see anything my glasses were broken my eye was like swollen shut the paramedics come and uh they like look at me and they're like hey uh you know we don't see anything external but there could be some internal injuries if you want to go to the hospital 
And I was like, no, I have to go play a show. There's this other crazy part of this story, which I don't, I don't know. It is pretty interesting. Okay, so once I got into the car accident, there was this guy. How I remember it was like a priest outfit, and he had a rosary around his neck. And he, was, he came out into the street. He was conducting traffic. He called the cops. He sat me down. He was like, call your mom. You were in a car accident. You're fine. And he talked to the cops. He talked to the paramedics. He, like, conducted everything. He just, he just, because I was such in a frantic state from just being like hit. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in a car accident, but it's just like the most disorienting thing. So Jacob comes to pick me up with a bunch of friends and they're like about to take me away. And this guy comes out and he's like, hey, let me talk to your friend for a second. And he, and they were like, who the fuck is this guy? And I was like, don't worry. He's like, he helped out with everything. He's, he's. He's just a, a nice guy. And so he takes me and he walks me down this alleyway. We're in like the middle of a really weird part of L.A., kind of a bad area. He walks me down this alleyway. There's this guy with like piercings all over his face. And he's like, don't worry, he's with me. And he walks me into this club. It's like an empty club. And there's just music blasting. It's like. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is going on? And he takes me over to the bar and he's like whiskey i'm like dude i am not trying to drink right now i was like 19 at the time he was like it's fine i'm just calm nerves like you seem really you seem really out of it so we walk back out and he's like i saw that car accident you weren't supposed to live through that like god saved you and you have to go with god now and he takes the rosary from around his neck and he puts it on me and i was like okay Awesome. And so uh, Jacob's like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Like, you seem really freaked out. And I was like, let's go play the show. Uh, it was a surf curse show. He was like, are you sure? And I was like, let's play the fucking show. Like, we have to go play the show. So we drive to the smell. And I just, I was so disoriented and I couldn't see anything. And I just remember an army of like teens carrying my drums, like through the crowd. And like people were setting them up for me. And then we played and it was like we had played several surf curse shows before, but normally it was just like our friends there and like, you know, rooms of less than 10 people for maybe like two dozen shows. And this was like a sold out show. There's a ton of kids. They were super hyped. And I had so much adrenaline from the car accident that I just play it, it it was like this chaotic crazy kids were like climbing on the walls jumping off the walls like moshing like going crazy there's actually like youtube videos of this and you can see my eye is like swollen shut we played just like the craziest show we'd ever played to that point went to the hospital afterwards and uh got a mri and they were like if you ever get in a car accident again, go directly to the hospital because <laughs> I was I was hit like I was hit like a centimeter above my uh, temporal lobe. And if I was hit any lower on the side of my head, I would have had like internal bleeding and would have been dead. Holy so shit. that's so terrifying. The, the next morning our I keep getting these emails that like our band camp downloads are are like up you know because you only had 250 free downloads and then you had to pay for more mm -hmm. so i kept i kept like paying for more and then five minutes later i get another email it was like your band camp downloads are up so i just kept doing this and then i was like this sucks and then i just was like let's put it on media fire and so i put all the songs on media fire and i just posted like hey you know if you're trying to get this like here it is for free and then, like, it started circulating around Tumblr and, like, Bandcamp. And that was, like, that was, like, the first blow up. Like, I don't think there's been a Surf Curse show since then that was not, like, sold out or crazy. And literally up until that point, we had only been playing to rooms of, like, our friends. So you just, like, never even saw a venue when it wasn't, like, how it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like people with with with, so, with some exceptions for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely, there was definitely more current joy shows that were like that. Because uh, I remember I lived in New York, 
uh, after that, and I was like cold calling venues, like, hey, put me on any show, like, please, I just want to play. And this is when I was still called televisions. I would just like cold call venues and they would put me on like first of four. And I remember I would just play to like rooms of nobody. That was the first blow up of like Surf Curse. After that was the Vine, Emma Greer. Uh, we hadn't had any of our music on Spotify at that point. I had like another personal tragedy that happened and uh i remember i was so like wigged out um that i needed something to like distract myself and i was like okay as a project i'm gonna like figure out how to put all my music on spotify for like a couple days i just like found all the old music uploaded it to TuneCore, and then like once i put it on spotify then it was just like a whole nother animal a month later getting paychecks i was like oh you can like make money <laughs> from putting you know a lot of musicians like shit on spotify and i'm sure they have all the right to but i think it's actually because they don't own the majority of their music that they're not seeing like those royalties after that started just only doing music uh this was like once i moved to la and uh then the final you know i feel like the massive the biggest blow up was obviously like the TikTok, you know, just like insanity. You know, I wasn't even on TikTok when all of this was happening. I remember it was like mid pandemic. I was having, oh, once again, my own personal crises. People just kept on telling me they were like, dude, I, I see your music like all over the place on, on TikTok. And I was like, oh, tight. Like, that's sick. It just became this unreal thing. And now, uh, you know, Freaks has like a billion streams on on Spotify now, which just happened like the other day. Yeah, I saw your TikTok and, and like, oh, like post music when you're young and then it'll blow up like 10 years later. Yeah, which is so funny because like that uh, I've had a TikTok now for like a year mm -hmm. and I feel like it's like nobody like nobody knows it exists. <laughs> like I'm just kind of like this sleeper cell in TikTok where I just post <laughs> like videos of me singing little peep songs and i'm like this is i'm like this is just for me that's like so insane that like i feel like all those moments of like it going like viral and stuff you like weren't like doing like anything to like even make that happen you know what i mean and then like you were so like detached from it which is every time i feel yeah. like every time that there's been like this massive surge and this is probably like the biggest point i want to get across to any people who are trying to get their shit to blow up is that stop trying <laughs> <laughs> it only looks embarrassing it only like it only hurts your your uh your image when i when i go on tiktok i just see so many people that are freaking hustling so hard that's like the entire that app that yeah. is the entire app yeah. especially for musicians they're just like you know they post like a hundred tiktoks of the same song and it's just like they're really going for it and it's just i i just don't think it works like that i don't think anyone knows how the algorithm will pick up certain things and i don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it like I, I just think that it's like because they made it so like easy for like anyone to suddenly like be able to blow up it like it just put everything within reach and like made it feel like everyone's a lot more equal but then at the same time it also i think contributed to like what you're describing i don't i can't imagine people blowing up that way anymore because nobody like people don't just know like one thing like in the same way because it's so oversaturated yeah i i think it's tapped into this like deep narcissism that we have as a society to like everyone's like oh i have my shot now you know like mm -hmm. i i have I, I have my uh my my gateway out of uh living a, a shitty life as like a for the majority of people living in this world like life is fucking horrible and hard and it's like they're like oh if i could blow up in this way if i could it, you know it's almost like it's almost like people trying to make it into uh, a sport or a 
you know, but but it's it's so much more easily accessible. It's like everyone's trying to win this lottery. All these, uh, did I just write the song of the year? Or like, uh, once you find a slowed and reverb version of your song on TikTok, then you've made it. That's uh, <laughs> everything you set out to do. And it's, but it's like, I don't know, this is, this is like one of the core like parts of the conversation, at least for me. It's like how insanely the landscape has changed. Like, in the 90s like Kurt Cobain just sat around like sending tapes out to record labels like no record label wants to hear your shit now unless you have like a minimum number of like social media followers whatever things are more accessible like you it's not that hard to get what you need to record at home and put it out yourself and it's like it it's great that it's accessible it's not like an exclusive thing but now it's like Brittany said, it's like so saturated with people making stuff that everyone's trying to like claw their way into the limelight. I have found artists that I like through them doing that, like through people posting on TikTok. I, I'm like conflicted about it as I feel like a lot of people are where it's like, okay, this is a valid way to reach people and like promote your own art. But also there's something like off about it. Like, and that's where I feel like the... Um, the parasocial relationships come in like not and natural if that makes sense yeah no it's yeah. it's weird it's it's super weird but i remember the first current joy show that i went to was like five years ago and i went up to brooklyn and um it was like a sold out show and i remember even waiting in line it was already like i could feel like this weird vibe and there were a lot of kids like my age that were all like you know, they were joking about like the, uh, they were all like, like memeing out loud. Like the energy was so bad. Like I remember at one point. What what show was this? Okay, that was the Gap Girls tour. Yeah, this was at uh, the Market Hotel. Market the, Hotel the on Valentine's Day. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was on Valentine's. Yeah. Um, but I, I really, thought that was a great show. I thought that was. I thought, no, that's the thing. No, I'm not just shitting. Yeah, thanks I'm not for just, shitting like, on my fans. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Was, no, I'm just kidding. No, there are a couple. Like, one of the main reasons I felt that like weird about it is that these are kids like my age, and it made me feel self conscious because they were a very rowdy. I think Jacob was like he had to stop and like be like, "Hey guys, can you respect this?" space and like chill out a little bit i was sitting there and these kids are like freaking out and like just kind of like being a little too much and stuff and um i just got this vibe where i was like i, I felt self-conscious like be a part of it because i was um i don't know kids and they were like being a lot but i don't think that's the other side of it that i did want to mention too is that um i think at least like I've, I've seen a lot of artists that have like blown up kind of abruptly on TikTok or whatever and got had similar um, effects, you know, where it's like all these kids that like found you on TikTok are coming out selling out your shows. I don't know how real it is, but I saw this video of Alex G playing a show recently where the crowd was so obnoxious that he stopped his set and told them that until they chilled out, he was going to play Piano Man, like, on repeat. And um, and then just, like, started playing Piano Man. And it just made them, like, stronger. Like, he was like, all right, every time you guys don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to add 20 minutes of Piano Man to this. And they just, like, kept goading him on. But I've seen a lot of artists in, like, that, that show of yours in Brooklyn where even though there was that component to it, like, you guys still, like, played the show, you know, and kind of, like went about it and it was a good show but I remember just feeling really like wigged out I remember going up to like buy a t-shirt um from Jacob afterwards and I just felt I felt like self-conscious approaching him because I was like god he, th he probably thinks I'm like I'm like one of these like chronically you're, the, you're, the, en you're the no you're the enemy <laughs> yeah you're one the of enemy the guys, crazy he was playing a show and like they, there's a weird vibe with the crowd and they're just kind of like oh god well like we'll play the show but these kids are like freaking the fuck out you know well it seems yeah like it's like a generational change i think like and it might not even mean that anyone's doing anything wrong it's literally like a culture shift like yeah. between like stages of the internet it's like yeah because we like talked about it and i feel like that's like happened at a lot of like shows recently that like even like we've been to where it's like because i get like the self-conscious thing it's like a weird like anxiety thing of not like respecting like the person yeah, or, like, a, yeah. And like, I don't know. And I know like I've seen like a lot of like videos and stuff, even on like Twitter of like that happening, like those interactions happening too. Do you think it's like inevitable just in general? Do you think that kind of behavior or like just like for audiences and fans and everything is like inevitable? I don't think that's new, right? Like, yeah. I mean, like talking about Kurt Cobain, like Nirvana fans are the fucking 
craziest, you know, and they would go crazy at shows. I, I don't think like the hype culture is new. I just think um, I just think the mode of experiencing music is different because of the well you know the the word of the day is parasocial relationship i mean i honestly miss the rowdy days i feel like that my my shows have like tamed down or something i remember i went on tour beginning of 2022 and it was like the first tour i had done since uh that 2018 tour or whenever that was like after covid yeah after covid and I was playing kind of these bigger rooms because like the TikTok thing had happened. Everyone was like not moshing or like not going crazy. And I was like, what the hell is going on? I was like, do people hate me now? I don't know. Maybe maybe the talkers are a little uh, a little more timid at the show. That's from my personal experience. I think they were crazier pre-TikTok. That's like, really the, interesting. People would get way crazier, especially at surf curse shows too. Like I feel like that's not a new factor. It's just there there was this cool new way with the internet of sharing art and sharing like everything, ideas, um, whatever you want to say. But, um, but, you know, capitalism will always step in and put a sour note on it. And I feel like that's what's really shifted in the last couple of years. I feel like Tumblr must have been the most authentic Tumblr yeah. and Bandcamp felt like this this new they were the DIY venues of the internet. I think also know? like old Twitter like was very kind of in that and realm. like old Twitter as well. Yeah. yeah. They felt like these like punk spaces where people were, you know, exchanging music and there there wasn't like a how do I blow up on Tumblr? How do I blow up on Bandcamp, you know? It was just kind of like it was a scene. It was an online scene that I felt like I was a part of. Even though I like, I I always got jealous of like Alex G and like the the other people because they I was always like, oh, they're doing so much better than me. Like I, <laughs> over the years, and I feel like especially with the 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 bang of TikTok and like TikTok shop, it's just like it's turned into a Black Mirror episode. And I, I feel like that's really the most adverse effect. I, I, I can't really speak to what that has done to the sphere of reality. For me, when I'm actually interacting with people at shows or I, I hate being in green room, it honestly makes me so anxious to be like stuck in a green room before a show. So I'll always like go out and try to get like a read of the crowd and I'll talk to some people. People are really chill. But every now and then you'll get somebody who's just like, you saved my life or like something. And like maybe maybe the music did, you know, um, but it's this whole thing where I have no idea who they are. Like they are literally a stranger to me and they have they have this like super intense relationship with me and have projected it through the means of the Internet or through the means of whatever whatever has happened in their life um, and their own personal experiences. And I feel like that's like the strangest effect of like the TikTok boom. Do um, you feel like you were like on the internet heavily before, like you kind of were pulled into like the internet world with, I guess like your rise in popularity with music. Do you feel like you've been on like the other side before you've experienced it? I got Instagram when I was like 19 years old. And I remember it was like just starting. I had, I am like part of the generation that did not grow up with a smartphone. Like I started texting when I was in like high school because there was like this girl I had a crush on who was texting me. And I was like, oh my God, I have to learn how to text. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I had like oh, a T9, I had like a flip phone, like a T9 flip phone. So like I haven't always been on the internet, but I feel like, God, these things are just like drugs, you know, like I feel very much on the Internet and I go through phases of like taking breaks from it and stuff. But when I'm on, I'm like on you can get really deep, much like any sort of like addiction or drug. You can get really, really deep into it to the level where you're, you, you know, like. You're not in reality anymore. We don't know the effects that's having on us in our brains. Well, we do know it's making us dumber. 
you know like <laughs> it's like that's like how they make it though like even with uh, oh yeah it, it enables you to like project more onto this artist because now it's not just like you're not just hearing and projecting your feelings and making that bond with like the song itself you're like oh like i i can see like this dude's instagram i can see what he's doing i can see what his life is like i basically know him you don't even realize that you're being tricked into like thinking you do no one has like any education on like this literacy or like what that means it's like no you don't like not that it's bad to you know connect with like an artist any type of artist even outside of music but then it like it makes it feel like it's appropriate for you to you know have this conversation or like feel like you have a dynamic with someone who is a stranger to you yeah and i probably like feed into that even when i just think i'm like posting something funny i'm stirring the content i'm creating the content i'm like creating that relationship to be uh perceived by other people but like you know i i never really think of it in a in a conscious way and and we could shit on it all this time but like you know if we could reframe the the conversation not to be you know how do i succeed how do i get these many clicks it's like how can my art be the best that it could be or like say something about the world or like say something about culture or like do something politically or you know it's it's more about like focusing on the real reason that we're all here is to like communicate as as a species together you know like and it, and i think that music is a very interesting way to do that i think that films is a very interesting way to do that to like tap into the cultural consciousness and reflect something about humanity and like if that is the goal and we still have these means of of spreading that word through the internet then like that would be a beautiful thing. That was a question I had for you because um, obviously there are a lot of benefits to having, you know, a network like this and having the opportunities and, and the ways we can connect now, even over like COVID, like so many people were, were able to keep in touch and, um, you know, stay connected when we were all stuck inside. And there are a lot of like benefits to it, but it's like anything else. It's like a tool that you have to use it right and um and the question i had was like from your perspective and with your your own experience being on the other end of it like what is if anything and maybe this is kind of too big of a question but like what would that look like if we did start using it in uh in a less like narcissistic way and like actually kind of um you know like you said like, use it to connect to this like cultural consciousness i think it would take a lot of meditation and self-reflection on the whole human race to get to that point read and understand when something is like corrupting you but i think it would take like a sort of altruistic community that was very self-aware self-reflective of their use of like and it would almost have to be on like a new app right like yeah it's the tower tarot card you know it's got to fall before <laughs> you can rebuild it yeah. which uh you know cynically i think will happen <laughs> very any day now not any day now but like like semi-related to that but like like you said you've never tried to tap into this like phenomenon like especially i feel like we kind of glossed over your f like first story about the first time you blew up and how <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I there's a lot in there. I think you there's a God. lot in there. I think that I think God gave you that whiskey. That was like that was like a manifestation <laughs> of like a higher power. Has it like changed your writing process at all, or even your approach to it? Or and if not, has it been hard to not let it change that? If anything, it's made me like more antagonistic in my writing. Like, it's <laughs> it's made me be like, oh, people are expecting this, like. I want to do something completely different that's going to like upset people, you know, <laughs> I'm like to, 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 to just sort of like stay true to some form of, of myself that was doing this like 10 years ago. I feel like when I was making Wild Heart, there was no, I was, li okay, so that album came out of playing open mic nights in Reno at this place called the Java Jungle. I would do open mic nights every Monday at, at this like 
coffee shop where it was a lot of stand-up comedians, like poetry, uh, like sometimes bands would come in and just set up their entire equipment. I would write a song every week and I would do a cover song every week and they were just to play these open mic nights and then I would record them if if they went well at the open mic night. And that's essentially what Wild Heart was, was like these songs that I would write every week for an open mic night. No intention, you know, there's no external factors that were really driving me. I feel like I literally make music because that gives, when I write a song that I like, like there's no high that is comparable like if we're talking about getting high here um <laughs> like there's no like tiktok success when when freaks blew up or when like all these things blow up i feel like i'm not even really getting a any what feeling from it i'm like oh that's cool but like you know it's something i wrote 10 years ago like i don't really care about it anymore in the same way like detached kind of detached yeah it's absolutely like a it's its own animal you know it had like just come out or was about to come out and obviously like kind of a change of speed from your other stuff and uh, we were talking about like the oh whole God, and people were angry yeah, this course <laughs> of people like being like what the fuck is this i remember <laughs> when uh fallout 4 came out the video game fallout 4 in like 2016 um it like had a bunch of, it was way different than the previous games i swear to god this is related i'm not just talking <laughs> sorry about i just knew what samira was thinking i know i know what Fallout 4, we both looked at each other we were like yeah. god he's got to be here to talk about video games I'm like video games Listen. now it's like are you <laughs> a gamer are you a gamer <laughs> yeah i might i might i haven't been known to game from from time to time hell yeah me too like, me too like, i've never played fallout but let's go let's go with the Fallout's good. No, it's just like it, it was the fourth <laughs> game was very different from like the, the previous ones. You know, they added like certain mechanics and like they gave your character voice lines and like the fans were pissed. Like people were freaking the fuck out. They were like, you're ruining the franchise, blah, blah, blah. I, I think that's another yet another one of these like big like core adverse effects where it's like people have started to view, you know, like the art you make as like, um, you know their own their own personal like they own it you know like they like you are just providing a service for them and not like this is a, a creative pursuit or like something that you're doing for reasons other than making them happy well, TikTok thing really encourages people to view artists like that it kind of goes back to um what you were saying about things coming from a genuine place and ending up kind of where they're supposed to end up. I feel like it kind of goes back into everything we're talking about with social media, because I think that the reason literally just like even the title of the podcast, like us, like obsessing over like Josh Obaye was like a time of the internet where things felt like they were genuine and for reasons where artists were just making the art they wanted to make. And it wasn't kind of influenced by capitalism or also influenced by the way social media has like evolutionized itself. I feel like that's also like a big reason why Samira too, because we've talked about this so much, why we like are so fascinated by that like little pocket of early internet and like why we even wanted to talk about all of this like in the first place. Yeah, because there wasn't like that thought of like, I like can blow up from this or I can like make like a career out of this or something versus you get on like TikTok or whatever, like YouTube, like it's like you are like going into it, like you know very well that like you can get big off of this. And so then that's always going to be like a thought in the back of your head, like every time you like do something. Also a weird thing of like having to like brand yourself almost like online. Uh, I, I just feel like I'm lucky I've had these you know, essentially like winning the lottery so many times throughout my career, just been so removed from it. Like some of my biggest idols in growing up was like Scott Walker, Jonathan Richman, Lou Reed, like people who just totally took hard left turns and were like, I don't give a fuck. You know, I try to uh, have some optimism in these conversations that there are people who want especially in 2024 for there to be cultural progression of music and i feel like that's sort of happened in some spheres but 
it's uh it's much more niche you know things have become intensely niche like uh to the point where there's hundreds of thousands of different bands that like a massive amount of people are consuming all different types of material and instead of like a mass amount of people consuming a small amount of material which is how it used to be which i think that that has created a lot of interesting spaces for new art to be created it's just not going to be consumed on the same level somebody talks about an artist and you look them up and they have like you know 10 million followers on spotify and you're like i don't know who the fuck this is mm -hmm. but but the 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 pocket that they've made their way into is is like its own world you know like we're we're all sort of just living in these own these like different spheres of influence the communities that used to be online evolved in like a very interesting way because it used to be very together and now there's just too many people there or maybe they like simply can't find each other if that makes sense like for that to still be possible and to happen in the same way yeah I think it's like the oversaturation thing too it's like there used to just be like very like specific bubbles I feel like and now it just like isn't in the same way but it's still Exist. like on Tumblr and Twitter and stuff like that like yeah. in, and like like in like different like fandoms and stuff like that where like people knew each other from that and I feel like it's not I don't know like I don't I maybe it's like that on TikTok and I just don't know about it but it doesn't seem like it is it's something that I thought about earlier um uh, you're talking about like taking an antagonistic approach um I feel like that's that's like the only weapon you have against it kind of I don't know if that's like something that you feel like you've started to feel more antagonistic about it out of necessity or just kind of like that's how it's progressed and that's just like where you're at now well it's funny because like i've always taken us like an approach of like everything that i'm gonna put out especially with this project i'm like i want to evolve in some way or do something different uh, you know, when I when I did uh, a different age back in like 2018, I remember working on the record like so meticulously, so hard for like two years. That whole time I was like, oh, my God, like no one's going to like this. Like it's going to be such a flop. I remember talking to Jacob being in my bed being like, dude, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Like. <laughs> I don't know where I'm what I'm doing. I, I had like such bad writer's block and I was writing that album. I put it out and I remember there was all these tweets like, what the fuck is this? Like this is this is not current joys. Like during COVID, it just like tapped into something and like became you know, like maybe it was the the slower pace of life or like whatever. It just blew the fuck up. And I was like, whoa, did not see that coming. <laughs> I was in Mexico and somebody was like having me sign it. And they're like, do you think this is your masterpiece? And I was like, Did and then like after that, I did um, my first studio record. So like I went into a studio with a band and I made Voyager, which like when I put it out again, people were like, what the fuck is this? This is not current joys, like whatever. And now like, what is it? Like three years later, people are like, kind of coming around to that one i'm not saying that it's all gonna have the same effect yeah. <laughs> like eventually uh, they'll love love and pop <laughs> dude i i don't think they'll ever love love and pop but the but i was thinking about this the other day where i was like i think that this was like the most important record i've ever made for myself because it broke me out of this like really monotonous zone where I was feeling very disillusioned with music. I was feeling very disillusioned with like art, just everything. It was like, oh, I can literally do whatever the fuck I want. Honestly, when I was making it, I was like, wow, everyone's going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> like that was that the whole time I was making it, I was like, dude, this is this is fire like everyone's gonna go crazy um and like i think lady said that once who said that lady like drain gang 
Got it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I totally yeah, like, I, yeah, no, I think I, I heard. Yeah, yeah. I remember in an in interview once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> but 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 still, like even with the reception and like if no one ever likes it, like whatever, I don't really care. Um, but I feel like it was the most important thing that I have made just because it like unlocked this part of me that reminded me of my humanity of like, like as long as I'm staying true to myself, then, you know, the external factor of what people uh, perceive or, or how it's being interpreted once it's out into the world does not matter at all. And it's thank like God that. people still like my old music because I can survive off that. <laughs> it's like Beauty and the Beast. It's like you broke the curse and you like transformed from a vending machine back into an artist again. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Do you and, think you'll keep uh, going that way, kind of? Like, do dude, you think you're going to keep going with like from Love and Pop? There's another step up there, like to like oh, further. It's coming out next month. It's called oh, Love and Pop Part Two. <laughs> and is it actually? It, that is the that is the antagonistic. Uh, <laughs> that is like, oh, you didn't like this, or you didn't like that. You're definitely not gonna like <laughs> this. Um, what more can like people expect from like a part two of that you didn't do in like part one? Oh, I call this one like the evil love and pop. It's like <laughs> like I was getting into, you know, hyper pop and drain gang. And now I've just gone way deeper into like hip hop and like all this stuff. And like uh, so I I do a lot of screaming on it. There, I was like, I want to make a lot of songs where I'm just like screaming my fucking lungs out. So it's like a screamo hip hop album. Um and I'm so I'm so stoked on it. I think it's amazing. Yeah, I, I but, think that like that's uh, at least for me like that does show like that dynamic you're talking about of feeling like like obviously with the the reception and like it being a different thing, but you being like like that being a really important thing for you to do. Because I like I will admit when I first heard I, whichever song came out as a single first, I remember hearing it. And being kind of like, oh, like um, I knew it was going to be different, but I was like, I don't know how into this I am. And I, after talking, um, I think Brittany had just like, like done the interview with you. And after talking to her about it and then seeing that show over the summer, it was like I, I like got it. Like I still like I'm not going to say that, like, I've been able to get super into the album since then. But it's like, your favorite so we, one, you can say it. We all know. <laughs> no, no, I love, you love it. Too, I'm sure will will be my actual favorite. But yeah, like, yeah. Being, I was thinking like it. being there and like seeing that show, because you know it's like a sold out show. Like what stood out to me was like everyone in the crowd was like, yeah, like oh, play this, like whatever, like for the encore especially. People were like, oh, play, you know, play American Honey, play blah blah blah. And then I remember you came back out and you were trying to remember how to play a song. Uh, at one point, I think you're even like can you guys like be quiet for a second so I can remember how this goes? And you played something that like no one knew what it was. And then you were just like, all right, see you later. And, then <laughs> off. and I was like, oh my God, like he like beat it. It like made me understand it. I feel like unless I'm just totally like weaving this like grand tail out of it or whatever. No, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And that was actually a song from this like musical I'm writing. I think that show was my big like, fuck you i'm only playing this one album and like you're just going to you're just going to have to take this for a little bit yeah. but like uh you know i definitely now i'm like i'm going to play music from like all my albums and um i think it it kind of creates a better communal experience as well the love and pop part 2 i like don't think i'm even going to play any shows for it i don't know how i would play any shows for it like it's just it's just too insane Sell it um, as touring then, the old albums, but then just play that. <laughs> yeah, a night of wild heart, and then you just fucking get that. me scr me screaming yeah. bloody murder for like thirty minutes. Um, <laughs> really excited about it, and like, there's a lot of collaborations on it that are pretty cool. Like, um, like I got pretty cemetery pilled 
uh, like Haunted Mound. I actually sampled a Current Joyous type beat from YouTube. Like, I finally got it cleared. I was with this rapper, and we were trying to make a beat, and it was like four in the morning, and we were just like, nothing's really working. And he was like, fuck it, we're going to YouTube. And he was looking up like Lil Peep type beat, like Young Lean type beat on YouTube. <laughs> I was exposed to the type beat world of YouTube. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you should just look up a Current Joyce type beat. And it's and <laughs> we found this one that's literally like a cover of a different age. It's just like sped up. And then we just like sang over it and he rapped over it and like that's a song now and it, honestly it was so hard to track down this kid like we had emailed him we had dm'd him found his instagram and my manager was like you're gonna have to re-record this sample <laughs> and i was like i was like that sucks it's gonna like take all the feeling out of it like also just on a meta level like i love that it's a current joys type beat from youtube like finally a few days ago, I started DMing his friends on Instagram. <laughs> like, I looked at his tag photos for the people who were in the most photos. <laughs> and then I just started oh, DMing shit. them and was like, hey, this is weird. Like, I'm trying to get a hold of this guy for this beat. And it literally worked. Like, they were like, oh, I'll get a hold of him for you. And then he wrote back and, like, we cleared it. Like dude, as that's of yesterday, one of the positives of the internet. <laughs> oh, for sure, dude. And, and people and yell at also, girls for checking tagged photos. It's like, yeah, literally. no, totally. And like a lot of the collaborations that I had from this album were also through just like following someone who I liked on Instagram, and they followed me back, and they were like, "Dude, I grew up on your music. Like, this is so crazy." And I'm like, this is so crazy. I love your music, <laughs> you know, like, um, so just like a lot of weird things like that have been happening in the last couple of months, which I think is a very positive part of the Internet and social media. You know, if nobody likes that, I have like a folk album. It's like an Irish <laughs> folk album that's coming out this year also. I and, feel like you're uh, going through something right now. <laughs> you you're absolutely right. <laughs> well, that one I that one should have come out like a long time ago it's just taken me so long to finish it um because it was like produced in a studio andrew sarlo who did like all the big thief records produced it so it was like sounds really fucking good and like is very highly produced it's like so so different um but if no one likes the love and pop songs then maybe they'll <laughs> maybe they'll fuck with that one yeah, or maybe they'll not that's fuck so with awesome. any of them honestly uh so that's my plan this year and then do you I have don't like really a know. release date for for either of them yeah um hopefully part two is gonna come out next month um the folk i'm excited album. to hear the folk album yeah, yeah people honestly like i i i'm like okay, I have two albums. It's like there's this screamo hip-hop album and there's this folk album and I say <laughs> to people both of them and they're like, I really love the folk album. And I'm like, tight. <laughs> they're like, I really love this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. End of sentence. Nothing else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they don't say much about the other one. But that's okay. <laughs> We're kind of running out of time. This is a little longer oh, than we sure. expected. But I want to close up we have a little something. We want to get back to the idea of the podcast a little bit. If you could just repeat this after me, Nick. Um, so yeah. So just like I state your name. And then like if you have like any like credentials that like might help your case, like you could be like, oh, like I'm Nick Radigan from Current Joys. And then I hereby request Joshua Baye for collaboration with the Internet's Dead podcast. Please, Josh, be a guest on the podcast. We miss you. Josh Ogaye. <laughs> Ovaye. Ovaye. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can get this right. Hi, I'm Nick from Current Choice. I hereby request Josh Ovaye to be on the Internet is Dead podcast. Please come on the Internet is Dead podcast, Josh Ovaye from Vine. Oh, and then say we miss you. We miss you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll. I think that'll help. Oh, yeah, yeah. Honestly. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think so, so yeah. yeah. 
It's going to be really <laughs> funny in like four episodes after you repeat, like you get every single guest to repeat it. Then it'll like, it'll just snowball and it'll become funnier every time. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it'll wear out at all. No, no. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on though and for having this conversation with us. Everything you have to say is very interesting and it's cool to hear the other side of like just like internet perspective and like especially like knowing that everything that's happened to you as a mus musician from the internet like you didn't even do is like a really interesting concept like and it just like is very telling of like how odd like the internet is i've yeah. literally done nothing to deserve this <laughs> <laughs> i've literally done nothing um <laughs> No, it's it's very strange. Um, thanks for having me on. This was awesome. I'm sorry if I, I'm just rambling a lot. No, not at all. It was all super interesting. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it of so course. much. <laughs> Episode one in the books. Do what you, you love. Have, you guys yeah. have theme music? No, but maybe we could put like a... We could put the current joys type beat over the end. Dude, you should <laughs> make it the outro music. I'll, I'll send I'll send you guys the albums if you promise not to leak them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We'd love to hear them. <laughs> my my manager would be so pissed if they got out, but I don't really care. We'll have we'll have a listening session and let you know what we think. You'll be like, I love the folk album. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys. It's like, are we gonna but just it, end the call or stop the recording? Like, who knows? Like freaking me out. It's like no idea. To, I think we have to all say say something in unison. Oh, I think I know what it is. <sighs> are we really? Doing Josh, it? Oh <laughs> no, no, we're God. done with this. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. Thanks for listening. Okay. Uh,